When we think about growing cacti and succulents, invariably we imagine plants thriving in heat in the high desert. And so we surround ourselves with plants that soak up the summer sun and grow prolifically in warmer temperatures. But then temperatures fall, winter arrives, and often we find ourselves with nothing to do. So today I want to share with you what I call off-season gardening, cactus and succulents that grow when the temperatures are cooler, plants that we can dabble with when we're getting bored of looking at our dormant other plants. So join me now as we go off and explore some interesting winter growing succulent plants. Now the first family of plants that we really need to address are the Haworthias and their allies. You can see in this juicy looking succulent pot, the front Haworthia cuperi, to the side here we've got Haworthia magnifica, and at the back with these amazing zebra stripes, Haworthiopsis attenuata. These are South African plants, and as you can see in this pot, they come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes, and that's neglecting the best of them. The flat top truncate leaves of Haworthia truncata. Now, if the amazing variety of shapes and forms isn't enough to pull you in, let me convince you, they're so easy to grow. They thrive with neglect. They don't need much water. They don't need very rich soil. And in fact, they don't even need much sunlight. They're one of those rare succulent plants that we can grow indoors. Admittedly, they still need light. Window sill's gonna be the ideal place for them. But we can't get away with that with most of our plants. So, Haworthias. Now, in fact, if you live somewhere where the temperatures are temperate, can even get away with growing them in your garden and they'll just explode with growth with a bit more room to move. So if you're looking for something easy, something to dip your toes into the world of winter growing plants, give Haworthias a go because they look amazing and they're almost impossible to kill. Now if there is one downside to growing Haworthias, it's the fact that, well, when they go dormant, they don't really change what they look like. They're gonna be staring at you all summertime. As all your other plants come up, they're gonna be pleading, do something, prod me, poke me, water me, give me attention. They don't really need it. So if you want a plant that you can truly ignore when the rest of your collection comes to life in the warmer months, I would suggest dip your toes into the world of bulbines. Fairly obscure, but they're a relative of the Haworthias and aloes and those sorts of plants and they are essentially a truly bulbous plant. This pot, full of a plant with a real mouthful of a name. This is Bulbine mesembryanthemoides subspecies namaquensis. And it's got these true fat, succulent, kind of juicy, squishy leaves. But they only come up when the weather starts to cool down. In the warmer months, this pot will look quite empty. In fact, you can even lift the tuberous roots when they're dormant store them in somewhere cool, dry, dark, out of the way, ignore them. And then when autumn comes, just before they're about to shoot again, pot them up and off you go. The other wonderful thing about bulbines, just like the Haworthias, there's so many different shapes. There's this one with its big fat two leaf variety, but then check out the twirly leaf madness of bulbine torta. Now, the ends of the leaves on this one are getting a bit crispy because we're actually coming into the warmer months here and it's gonna go dormant soon. But this is also evidence of the beautiful little flowers that they all get. Absolutely stunning and they're quite fragrant as well. What more could you want? Now, bulbines are a bit more obscure. You're not gonna find them readily available in a garden center or anywhere like that. But, they grow so easily from seed so if you feel like you're ready to dip your toes into the world of seed sowing, I cannot recommend more strongly. Have a go at growing bulbines. They're fantastic plants. They're super weird and obscure. Probably no one else you know will have them and they're easy to grow as well. And when they start to flower, you'll make heaps of seed for yourselves. I had eight bulbine tortas last season. They gave me 600 seeds. What on earth am I supposed to do with all those seeds? Bulbines, cannot recommend them more highly. Let's see what's next.
Now I'm gonna steer the conversation away from true succulents for a moment, but I feel like it's worthwhile. I wanna share with you now a bulbous plant or a bulbous group of plants, the oxalis. Now, before I started this collection, if I heard the word oxalis, all I was thinking about was a weed that grew in my lawn, real pain in my ass. But there are so many of them from all over the world that their forms and varieties can actually be quite incredible. And they're not all weedy at all. Check out, for example, oxalis palmi fronds, a South African species from their winter rainfall region. In fact, most of the plants I'm gonna show you are from that winter rainfall region of South Africa. And isn't that shape, isn't that growth form something divine? Now, the other wonderful thing about oxalis, here's another one, this is oxalis flava, is that they produce the most delicate, wonderful flowers. Absolutely incredible. And they're gonna take up zero space in the summertime because what you can do as a true bulbous plant they will completely die back to a bulb maybe about a centimeter big take those bulbs after they've died back shove them in an envelope stick them in a wardrobe in your house completely ignore them and then they'll start to shoot roots as the temperatures cool down when that happens bung them in a pot a few weeks later you'll have a beauty like this how good is that i'm all for anything that saves me space and Oxalis, king of space savers. They need a lot of light though, so keep that in mind. Plenty of sunshine, otherwise you can mostly ignore them and let them thrive. Fantastic. You can stick heaps of them in a pot as well. So, maybe steer left into the world of Oxalis if you want something different. Now, let's jump back into the other succulents. The next family of plants that I would be neglectful if I didn't talk about are the pelagoniums. Now, pelagoniums, I know, they've got a reputation. They're kind of these fluoro-flowered garden plants, which for a very long time I couldn't stand the sight of them until I learned that, in fact, species pelagoniums, again from South Africa, are some of the most amazing succulent plants imaginable with these very thick, gnarled, succulent trunks. And the upside is their leaves have the most incredible scent sometimes. Oh, wow. Now, this is just a little baby Pelagonium crithamfolium. Have a look on the screen, you'll see what it looks like as a grown plant. This Pelagonium cotyledonis. And really, they've got these gnarled trunks, but as you can imagine, Pelagoniums, they also amazing flowered plants. So, you know, Set reputation aside, give them a crack. If you enjoy fat cordisiform trunks, tick. If you enjoy whoa, wonderfully scented leaves, tick. And if you enjoy delicate little flowers, three ticks. What's the downside? I was umming and ahhing about what I should do as my final plant here. And well, in the end, I've settled on this little beauty. Dioscorea elephantipes. Now, again, South African plant. And this one is what we call a true cordex plant. Basically, a vining plant that emerges from a really fat, swollen base that acts as a water storage organ. The thing about this one is that whether it's in growth and has the vine, whether it's dormant and it's just the cordex, a bit of a specimen anyway because how good's that that gnarled textured almost tortoise shell kind of base is really what this plant's all about now they're not necessarily the cheapest of plants but they grow somewhat rapidly especially if you give them sufficient water when they're in growth a few years time you can have yourself a grapefruit sized base or even bigger so Go out, check out Dioscorea elephantopes. If, you know, you're looking for some kind of truly impressive specimen plant, just to keep yourself occupied when everything else is asleep. So, that's it for winter growing plants. If you've got any recommendations, plants that I haven't touched on, there's a whole world of others, athonas, crassulas, even some species of pachypodiums, all sorts of things. 
by all means, throw your recommendations into the comments as well. If you have any questions, same story. I won't keep you any longer. I hope you learned something. And for now, happy winter growing. If that's where you are in the world. For me, I'm going to go bask in the sunshine. Catch you next time.